Welcome to your final video of the KX introductory workshop series. Um, well done for making it this far. Um, and for our final video, we just want to show a quick example of streaming data. And this is using the publishing subscribing mechanism. Um, it is a very common use case for KDB um, by a lot of our clients and holds a lot of power. So we do just want to um, showcase that. Um, so to start off with, we're going to subscribe to a remote process. And that's why we touched on enter process communication briefly in the previous video. That's kind of leading up into this publishing subscribing section. Um, so in order to do um, streaming and, and publishing from one process to another, we obviously have to have multiple processes set up. Um, so that's what's happening here. I'm using my handle from before and I'm going to pass it a synchronous request. And this is a pre-built function. Um, don't worry too much about this for now. This is basically saying I want to subscribe to that background process. Um, so I'm running that now and that's subscribed, but it's not doing anything yet. Um, and the reason is we haven't defined this UPD function yet on our current process. Um, so to explain that a bit better, I'm going to just show a diagram. So if I look up my KDB tick uh, UPD, for example, um, I see a few different white papers are listed here. These are really great extra reading. I would definitely encourage you to do that if you're interested in um, ticker plant infrastructure in particular. But what I want to highlight is this diagram. So this is a standard vanilla tick setup. And what we have here is multiple different processes. So all these um, squares here are different processes. So they would have different ports assigned to them as we've seen in the previous IPC video. Um, so this is the, the workflow. My data comes in, comes into my feed handler, and then it's coming into my ticker plant. So my, my ticker plant might be the first place I want to define UPD. So UPD by default on all processes um, is not defined, but as soon as it is defined, it acts as an event handler. Um, so for any incoming data, so if I'm subscribed to another process, it will do something upon receiving a new update. So, um, for example, data will come in, it will be in my ticker plant. I might um, <clears throat> want to save that down to a log file. That will just mean that in the event of um, uh, something going wrong, I can then replay that data and I haven't lost it. So that's our backup mechanism um, in our tick setup. Then I might save my data to a real-time database and that's going to be an in-memory table. Um, and then I might say at the end of every day, I want to save that down to disk. So that's going via a non-disk historical database to my historical database. Um, I might also at the same time want to save that data um, or send it via a real-time subscriber that's doing something else. So that might be doing some further calculations, for example. Um, so the, the point here is that by default, UPD is not set up um, on all of these processes. But once you've defined that, so say, for example, in our UPD function, we say, um, you know, save data down to disk here. For UPD here, we'll say insert it into an in-memory table. Um, and for real-time subscriber, we'll tell it to do some calculation upon receiving of the data. So that's what differentiates different processes in a tick architecture, um, depending on, you know, what you've defined your UPD function to do. So if I jump back to my notebook, um, first, we're just quickly checking our schema of our table um, on our remote process. So we can see we've got four columns and, um, time vendor, latitude and longitude. So this has got um, positional data for each uh, vendor or, or um, GPS data. So we're seeing our local table app, app requests is currently empty. So I've got my schema because I've defined my schema to be, um, I've defined my table to be the same as the one on the remote process, currently empty, but I have my, I've, I've, um, I've got my schema set up nicely. Um, to the correct values. So let's define UPD on this process. So what this function is doing is saying, um, upon every new um, update that comes in, I want you to upsert this app request table with that message. So X will be the incoming message. So if I run this, so checking app request before again, it's empty. And if I run this and I run this app request, I can see, oh, now I've suddenly got um, data flowing in and I can see that's increasing and increasing all the time. Um, and these are all my messages that are coming in. And the reason why how I'm getting these messages is because I've subscribed at the beginning. Um, so let's take this a little bit further. If I wanted to get, for example, my total number of um, results per vendor, if I continue to run this, I see my count is ever increasing. So a more efficient way to keep a tally um, would might be to not only update my 
main table of app requests, but actually just um, extend my UPD function a little bit and also create um, a, 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 a table called num requests here. And I'm saying for every request that comes in, first of all, save it to my table, and then I want to keep a tally. So I'm adding on one every time to this variable for every vendor. So if I define this, I can see what I get back is a table and I have my three vendors and I'm not doing um, anything different to the query. I'm actually just calling the table name itself. And you can see that's being updated for us in the background. So basically your EUPD function, whatever you put in there, um, that will happen upon receiving every single new request. Um, and to just show one further extension of UPD, say we wanted to create an alert, um, we could also put in um, a few more lines in here. So something you might do, for example, is put in, um, you wanna save the message. So for example, if you wanted to show what that incoming message looked like um, or save that to a variable that you could further inspect, you could do this um, here. So we're saving this to a variable called .debug.x. The .debug part is just saving it in a different namespace. Um, which means we can access it outside the function. Um, then I'm upsetting to my app request table as before. I'm increasing my tally of my count of vendors. And then I'm doing a if statement. So this is how we do conditional checks in Q. Um, you can see here, if I double click on this, I can see where my, um, it's highlighting the second green bracket down here. So that's my outer if statement. This is my inner if statement. So the question we're posing here is, we want to publish an alert if the vendor for BBB and the latitude is greater than 74.9. Um, so we're doing two checks. So the first one we're saying um, if, and inside if here, I've got my first check. So if BBB equals what the vendor is, so X backtick vendor is just indexing into that vendor column as we've seen previously. Um, so if, if that's happening and that's true, then do my second if statement. So if my latitude, um, is greater than minus 74.9, then I'm gonna do something and I'm gonna do some printing out. So zero N bang here. Um, this just means print out. Um, so it's similar to show in that way, but we use it a lot when we want to do alerting um, or erroring to the console. So for example, I've got um, a message here. So a trip for BBB has arrived at the long of, and I'm joining on my string of the long here. So this is, I'm converting this value into a string first, and then I'm gonna append it onto my message. So if I define UPD and run that and just wait, I suddenly see I'm getting some alerts coming out. Um, so I've changed that to be that. If I um, change this to be AAA and change the message to be AAA, um, we may not have any data that does that, um, which is interesting. Oh, we do, there we go. <laughs> um, so we've got less, we've got less of those coming out. So um, I'm just gonna redefine this to not do the alerting so we don't have alerting coming up all the time on the bottom. So yeah, you can see there how you can extend your UPD function and how you could um, completely customize that on different processes to do different things, depending on you what, what features you want that process to have. Um, just one thing to note with UPD, it's really important that you're, um, you don't add so much logic that it exceeds the time of a new request coming in. So your execution of the UPD function should always be less than the rate of the incoming messages. So this is what we mean when we talk about real-time streaming. This is an example of it working live. Um, if you're, um, one more thing we haven't mentioned, but um, if you're, say you're working with a remote um, process and you're done, um, you can just close the connection using hclose. So similar to how we used hopen at the beginning, we can just close our connection at the end. Um, again, we've got more advanced um, courses um, on this subject as well. Um, but we just want to give a flavor in our introductory workshop to show, you know, um, a little taster of what it, what it does, what it does and what it looks like. Um, so that's our KX introductory workshop. Um, as I mentioned in our intro video, we do have a form um, and a quick quiz that we would really like you to fill in and give us some feedback. And doing that, um, you'll receive your KX workshop certification. So thank you so much if you've made it this far um, and for following along. And hopefully I'll see you in our future courses. So thank you very much.